Okay, Assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Good day again. So now we will be discussing about translation from word phrases or phrase to mathematical expressions. Okay. One important thing when it comes to translation is you know the keywords. Because basically what we are doing here is I am saying something, okay, and you need to write it down in a mathematic um write it down using numbers, letters, and operations, okay? So basically, it's just word phrase to math expression. So just like this one, okay? So we have A plus B. So we have A plus B here on the screen. Let me use my pen. Okay, this one. Okay, so we have A plus B. So again, um, the important thing when it comes to um, translating, okay, is you know, you have to know the, the keywords, okay? So, for example, in addition, so addition is, of, of course, just one operation in mathematics. It's just simply plus, the symbol plus, okay? So, basically, what we need to do there is we need to combine the numbers. Say we have 2 plus 2, the answer is 4, okay? But when it comes to words, okay, you can actually express addition in a lot of ways. For example, this can be read as the sum of 2 and 2. Or we have 2 plus 2. Or we can have 2 added to 2. Or we can have 2 increased by 2 and so on. So there are a lot of words or a lot of ways for you to denote addition. But then again, the operation will still be 1. So as you can see here on the screen, I have um, taken the liberty of uh, taking a screenshot of one of the many keywords, okay? That you can uh, take off the internet for the operations. So for addition, there's a lot. We have um, sum, increased, more than, the total, etc. Subtraction as well, multiplication, and also division. Now, your enemy here would be English, com um, English comprehension. Okay. Again, your enemy here would be English comprehension. The, and why am I saying that that would be your enemy? Because, of course, there are different prepositions here. When we talk about prepositions, this would talk about the location or the placement of that given. Okay? So, later on, you will see why prepositions is very important or English comprehension is very important when it comes to translating. Because as I would like to translate, okay, I write as how I hear it. Okay? Kung paano ko siya naririnig, ganun ko siya sinusulat. Okay, I write as how I hear it. Or I could, uh, or I write as how I hear it or say it. Kung paano ko sinasabi. For example, this one. Sorry. Um, we have the sum of n, n and a. So let's try this given. The sum of n and 8. So since we are talking about the sum, then there, definitely this would be addition. So the sum of n and 8. Now, as for this one, since this is end, n and 8, and this is under addition, okay, we can actually interchange that, but I, it's not advisable, okay? So, you will only interchange depending on the prepositions, okay? So, what, whichever is first, then when it comes to this case, then it should be first. So, n plus 8. The next one, we have 45. Let's make this smaller so that I can fit the entire thing here n plus a. So next one, we have 45 times x. So I can write this down as 45 times x because again, I told you guys that there, there are different symbols for multiplication. As for addition, it's just simply plus. But for multiplication, it's a lot. So we can have 45 times x. You have 45 parentheses x, still multiplication. 45 x, still multiplication, right? Then we can also have 45 asterisk x. We have 45 and uh, the small x, x times x. A lot of um, denotation for multiplication. But then again, it would all be the same. But it can never be, ever, ever, ever be x45. Remember this one. Okay. This would be the same for this one, Ito, this case. Okay. When you are using the no symbol way of writing multiplication, then 
always make sure that the numerical coefficient or the number part would be first. Okay, this one is very wrong. Okay, next one. B divided by 23. So we can have it as B divided by 23. Or we could have B fraction um, slash 23. Or we could have B is 2, 23. Or we could have the fraction way of B over 23. Okay? But again, in division, you cannot interchange. You write it as how you hear it or say it. Okay? Next, 4 is subtracted from Y. Now, this one, the uh, this one is about preposition. So, when we are talking about from, galing sa. Okay? So, when we are talking about from, it would come from Y. So, meaning, I will subtract Y from, I, I mean, I would subtract 4 from why? So therefore, in this case, when we are talking about the from, okay, the from, the very first term would be the one immediately after y. But it depends on the grammar. So this would be y minus 4. Very important yan, guys. Very important. Let me zoom in a little bit. Sorry, sorry. Okay, there you go. So we can write properly. Okay, this would be y minus 4. Okay. From kasi, because it's the from. Next one, twice the sum of u and v. Now, there is a term here, twice. So, what do we do when we talk about twice? If you hear the word twice, you will multiply by 2. So, it would be twice the sum of u and v. So, when we talk about these kinds of cases, like the sum of n and 8, the sum of u and v, this one is actually considered as one give uh, one operation, the sum of u and v. So therefore, I would have a parenthesis here, u plus v. Okay, because this one is very different by twice the sum of u and v. Okay, this would see this would be read as twice u plus v. But since we are talking about before you do the twice, you get the sum of u and v. Therefore. We have it like this, okay? And just to play safe, if you will notice, if you would ever encounter these kinds of given, like the sum of n and 8, the sum of u and v, always put a parenthesis, okay? So, it would denote that they would come first, okay? They would be considered as a group. Okay, next one. The quotient of 5 and z, so you will notice here this is one group, is added to n added to when we talk about to and from the term after the, that preposition would come first so that would be n plus we have the quotient of 5 and z this is considered as one group therefore they would be together in a parenthesis so we have quotient of 5 and z okay Practice makes perfect when it comes to this case. It's okay to co commit mistakes. Next one, 12 times the average of A, B, and C. Average of A, B, and C. If you see those, may off and end, off and end, one group. When we talk about the average, okay, I hope you are familiar with average. This one is on elementary level. So, let me just write it here at the bottom part. Dito sa baba. So, let us... Oops, sorry. Okay. Okay. There you go. Okay. So, 12 times the average of A, B, and C. So, firstly, let's talk about... Yeah, let's just write 12 because it's 12 times. So, times. Average of A, B, and C. When we talk about the average, what we are actually doing here is we add the numbers and we divide them Okay, based on how many they are. So this is a plus b plus c. They are three. Uh, there are three times. Therefore, we divide by three, and this is the answer for our translation. Next one, the product of x and y. So again, we take this as one group divided by their difference. Divided by their difference. The difference daw ng ano. Walang binigay na. There is no term given here. But based on English, uh, or, um, I don't know, based on English itself. Okay? 
we are dividing by their difference. We This there is referring to the two terms that we are discussing a while ago, which is, of course, x and y. So let's write it here. The product of x and y divided by their difference. Okay. So again, this is where English uh, comes in. Uh, and this is where English becomes very important. The product of x and y. So we, that's easy. Because this is one group. The product of x and y. So one group. x and y. Okay. Divided by. Divided by their difference. So what is their difference? x and y. So their difference. x minus y. Difference daw nila. So therefore, you subtract them. So x minus y. And that would be it. Yun na yun. That's it. Okay? So this is how you translate, everyone. This is how you translate word phrases to mathematical expressions. And we would also um, do it the other way around. What do I mean by that? You would be given, some at some cases, you would be given the phrase mathematical expression itself. Say we have um, 2x plus 3y. Okay. You would be given the phrase. And what you need to do is you need to translate into word phrases. Mathematical phrases into word phrases. So you write as how you read them. So this one is 2 times x. 2 times x plus 3 times y. In this case class, okay, please do not use fancy words. Like for example, 6 is added to 3, 7 is increased by 2, and so on. Again, 6 added to 3, 7 is increased by 2. Do not use them. Those are just, um, um, I don't know, I, I feel that they are just junk. A junk way of reading um, addition. You just say it as plus. This one is 6 plus 3. Don't use fancy words anymore. I don't even know why ano, why, why translation needs to use those added or ano, um, the sum, etc. and so on. You can re you write them as how you read them. 6 plus 3, 7 plus 2, and so on. Same goes. 2 times x or 2x, 2 multiplied to x, it's up to you, plus 3 times y. That's it. Don't use any other fancy way of, uh, no, of writing them. Okay? You, are, you will be just wasting your time. Another given. Say we have um, 3m n. How about this one? So you read it as 3 times now on this case since it has a parenthesis you use the off end phrase. We have 3 times the difference, I'm just going to write the difference, of M and N. That's it. No more fancy way. No more um, reduced by, um, decreased by, etc. Okay? Don't use any fancy phrases anymore. You write them as how you read them. That is the very important in our case. Okay? As to not waste time anymore on how to answer your given. Okay. Say we have this one. So this one is 5 divided by 2 times P. Uh, 5 fraction divided by 2. Since they are together, no operation, 2 times B. You write them as how you read them or um, hear them. Okay? And last example. Again, do not overcomplicate your given. It would be a waste of time. Say we have the equal seven. Okay, C. Okay, we have C to R. So you read it as C is equals... Equals, kasi there's an equal sign. 2, 2 times 
are. No more fancy way of writing. You read, uh, you write them as how you read them. Paulit ulit kasi nasabi, okay? Because that would make your life easier. Okay? So again, class, since uh, we have no choice but to, um, sorry, we have no choice but to follow the keywords, the table of keywords for, ano, for translation, okay? You have no choice but to follow the keywords then, at least, on this case, um, on this case, let me just show you, and on translation of, um, mathematical to word, then it would be easy for us, okay? But on this case, we need to follow this one, okay? They would, there would be given, say, like, we have, um, A times B, or the product of A and B, then just follow the rulings when it comes to the phrases, but as for, this is, ano, ah, this is word to mathematical. But as for mathematical to word, do not ever, ever, ever use that stupid table. Okay? Because it will make your um, life harder. Okay? Translation should be easy. And you, remember, siya sabi ko kanina, I'll write them in red. You write them. Write them. As how you hear or read. Yan yan. You write them as how you hear or read. Kung pa, isulat niyo siya kung paano niyo siya naririnig or binabasa. And that would be it for um, our lesson for translation. Thank you for listening everyone. And assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh.